If you like our video, click the button to subscribe to our channel and get easy access to new content. To see our full suite of ad-free video courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides, visit us at www.teachucomp.com. To create a purchase order in QuickBooks Online, click the plus new button in the navigation bar. Then click the purchase order link under the vendor's heading in the drop-down menu to open the purchase order window. To choose a vendor, select one from the vendor drop-down in the upper left corner of the window. If selecting an existing vendor's record, their information then populates the other fields within this form based on what you entered when you created the vendor's record. Alternatively, you can type a vendor's name or select the Add New Choice from this dropdown to quickly add a new vendor. The Purchase Order's status appears in the Purchase Order Status dropdown below the Vendor dropdown. To the right of the Vendor dropdown is an email field which is populated with the vendor's email address if you entered it when creating the vendor's record. Alternatively, you can enter an email if you didn't enter it when creating the vendor or if adding a vendor on the fly. If needed to send copies of this purchase order to others, click the CC slash BCC link by this field to show additional CC and BCC fields in the drop down menu. Then enter the email addresses into these fields as needed and click the Done button. The Mailing Address field shows the selected vendor's address. If creating a new vendor, enter their billing address here. To select a customer's name for drop shipments, select them from the Ship To dropdown. If you select a customer, then their shipping address information appears in the Shipping Address field if you entered a shipping address for the selected customer. If you don't use the Ship To dropdown, then the Shipping Address field instead shows your company's shipping address. The Purchase Order Date field shows the current date by default. To change the date, click this field and select another date from the calendar dropdown that appears. To enter a shipping carrier preference, type it into the Ship Via field. If you added custom fields to your purchase orders, they appear below this area. If you enabled location tracking, a location dropdown appears at the right side of this window. If you enabled multiple sales tax agencies, a permit number field also appears here. If you enabled the show items table on expense and purchase forms toggle switch in the bills and expenses section of the expenses settings in the account and settings window, then the next section in the purchase order is the category details section. This is also the default section that appears if this switch is not toggled to the on position. Note that the Category Details section is rarely used in purchase orders as it defeats the purpose of receiving inventory items by using a purchase order. To collapse and expand this section, click the black arrow to the left of the Category Details label. If you do not use products and services, you can use this section to instead select the accounts affected by your purchases. To select an account, click into the Category column and make a choice. Then enter the purchase description and amount into the description and amount fields in the same row. Rows can also be assigned to a customer project or class if enabled by using the customer project and class fields. Next is the more commonly used Item Details section, which lets you enter the products and or services you are purchasing from the vendor. To collapse and expand this section, click the black arrow to the left of the Item Details label. To select an existing product or service, select a choice from the Product Service dropdown. If SKUs are enabled, make sure the SKU field's value is correct. Also ensure the value in the description field is accurate. Then enter the quantity and rate into the quantity and rate fields to calculate the amount shown in the amount field. You can also assign each item to a customer project or class if enabled by using the customer project and class drop-down fields. 
When you click into the last line in either section, QuickBooks Online adds a new line automatically. Alternatively, to add four new lines to the desired section at once, click the Add Lines button under either section. To delete a line item, click the Delete button, which looks like a trash can, at the right end of the line item to delete. To delete all the lines in a section, click the Clear All Lines button below the desired section to clear. To enter a message to the vendor that appears on the purchase order, type it into the Your Message to Vendor field below these sections. To enter information for yourself, type it into the Memo field, which does not appear in the purchase order. To attach a file up to 20 megabytes in size to the purchase order, click the Attachments field. In the toolbar at the bottom of the window are buttons for Cancel, Clear, Print, Make Recurring, Save, and a drop-down Save and Send button. The choices in the Save and Send button's drop-down menu are Save and New and Save and Close. To cancel the purchase order, click the Cancel button. To clear all the data from the current purchase order, click the Clear button. To save and print the purchase order, click the Print button to open a print preview PDF of the purchase order in a new window, which you can then print and close. Clicking the Make Recurring button opens the Recurring Purchase Order window where you can create a new recurring purchase order template if needed. To save the purchase order, click the Save button. Alternatively, Click the Corresponding Choice from the Save and Send drop-down button to save the purchase order and then send it, close the window, or create a new purchase order. Remember to click the Subscribe button to see more of our videos. See our full suite of courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides at www.teachucomp.com.